Cheers, you guys. Hi. Okay, so it's late. It's been a really long week. And I was just thinking about how I never do like full Q and A's, but I also had a couple things I wanted to say before I did that. And before I did that, I wanted to say cheers. I just got this bottle of wine. My husband just recommended it, or my husband just picked it up for me. Um, it's called Buckshack Caver Cabernet Sauvignon. It's made on oak. No, I'm sorry, bourbon, something bourbon. Bourbon barrels. It has like a very rich Cabernet flavor, but it has like this hint of, um, what do you call it? Like bourbon. And I'm not a bourbon drinker. So don't, it's not, there's not actually bourbon in this. Anyways, cheers. I hope you guys have a beverage. We might be around for a minute. But, you know, before we start, I want to make sure everyone's doing okay. Get your wine o'clock, guys. Okay. Does everyone have their does everyone have their their Jesus juice okay. or so let's do this. I want to take a quick interme uh, an intermission to fill up my water and by the way it's water. I don't uh, drink during the, these live streams. So um, I'm going to take a quick break to fill up my my um, water. I'm going to invite you guys to join if you'd like to join and share your thoughts on Bertolino. The next day. Let's get started on Josh Duggar. You guys, you guys got your wine. I got my wine. I'm, um, cue up my haters accusing me of being an alcoholic. All right, let's go. What's in Katie's cup? You'll never know. <laughs> so, um, she wasn't mentally or emotionally ready to show her dashboard. And, um, yeah. I am not high again. I'm, I don't get high. I don't know what you're talking about. I am not drunk. I don't get drunk. Why do you guys think that I get drunk or get high? I'm a mom that works um, a lot and I don't have time to get drunk and I would not get drunk on YouTube. That would just be ridiculous. With a channel this large, I would never. And no, oh, that was the other thing. People were like, you're always drinking on live streams. Look, it's water. This cup has water in it. Just water, sorry, not trying to be super exciting. It's water. <laughs> it's a water night. Hello. And now you know it's always in my cup. Legit water. I'm a wateraholic. Are you guys wateraholics? Water is my favorite thing. Um, I wish I had wine, but I don't. Me and my wine. Water tonight for me. I'm actually just really happy right now. I am drinking water. And I'm just being silly and having fun. I am not intoxicated. Thank you, though. Even if I was, you guys, I'm 42 years old, and that's my right. But I'm definitely not. Ugh. Vodka. I am not a vodka drinker. We don't. I don't. I don't drink hard liquor. Rarely. Rarely. Okay. I like a really good martini. But I am like old school, you guys. I like them straight up. I like them vodka, I like them chilled, and I like them dirty as hell. Usually when I order a dirty martini, it's nice and cloudy and you can taste the olive juice in there and it's so delightful. Tonight, I ordered a dirty martini and it tasted like nothing. And I was so disappointed, but I was so... No, I like vodka martinis. I am a straight vodka martini girl. Um, I assume you partied pretty hard in your 20s and that you probably aren't, can't even stand the smell of liquor now because of it. LOL, I'm not projecting. <laughs> Thanks, Brittany. Um, I didn't, um, I don't, I don't drink very frequently. 
My husband and I went out for dinner last week, and I had a vodka something or other, a Cosmo, and it took me all of dinner to drink it. Um, but no, I still like a good cocktail. If I'm if I'm gonna be honest, like my favorite cocktail is like a really good dirty martini, like a um, Grey Goose straight up with like um, blue all like blue cheese stuffed olives oh, and extra dirty. Yeah, I love them shaken, not stirred. Exactly. I love a good martini. They're just so cold. They're so good. Her absolutely mental illness is a ongoing um, process. And I have ADHD. I'm very, 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 very honest about that. That was another comment I got in my comments earlier today was like, how are you so going to judge other people online? Like, are you, is your life so perfect? Like, I bet there's skeletons in your closet. And I'm like, girl... Like, I'm honest with all of my skeletons. I have ADHD, I have OCD, I have anxiety, and I have um, panic attacks, of which I take medication. I have had counseling on and off that has helped me with coping mechanisms and managing my behavior. And now, because of my medications working effectively, I don't need to have counseling. It's amazing what it can do when you're taking care of yourself. You better believe that, like, if my doctor tells me to do something, I am on it. Like, when we started my medication or my Smarties for ADHD, my doctor was like, you can't do this, you can't do that, I don't want you to drink wine. I don't want you to drink alcohol. I don't want you to drink anything else. I don't want you to take any other illicit Smarties. So I take it extremely serious. I don't mess around with it. First off, I'm on an extended release medication. It lasts for 12 hours. So if I take my medication at 7 p.m., 7 a.m., um, my med will be off by 7 p.m. So I will not have Adderall in my system after 7 p.m. that night. At that time, if I want to have a glass of wine, I can. My doctor has been very clear with me that I can have a glass of wine. First off, I don't drink to get drunk and I would never have more than that because I don't want to counteract the benefits because it's a depressant. Um, and it's legal for me to do that. And as long as I'm not having like drinks, seven drinks a night, like if I have a glass of wine, which typically during the week, I'll have like two glasses, maybe three glasses of wine. That's it. And I never in one setting. Like last night I had a single glass of wine. I drink far less than I ever drank in my entire, than I've ever drank in my entire life now. But my doctor was like, you can't do this. You can't do that. I don't want you to drink wine. I don't want you to drink alcohol. I don't want you to drink anything else. When you're on these meds, you should not be getting drunk. No, but you can have a glass of wine. And I will always tell you guys this, like you need to talk to your doctor and you need to have that conversation with your doctor about like what's okay and what's not okay. And my doctor specifically said, you can have a glass of wine, just don't get drunk. Anyways, um, but anyways, like it's, I am on antidepressants as well, which technically, no, I can still have, I'm not on Wellbutrin. She, my doctor said I can have a glass of wine. So I'm going to go off the recommendations my, my doctor makes. She's the one that prescribes everything. She's the one that knows everything that I'm on. Um, and that's it. My doctor was like, you can't do this. You can't do that. I don't want you to drink wine. I don't want you to drink alcohol. I don't want you to drink anything else. Um, what was I saying? Oh, you guys, my Adderall's wearing off. Oh, cheers. It's Saturday night. Let's all have some wine. They're also, so there's someone on her panel named Sheena or something who's like been in recovery for like 16 years. Go Sheena. Yay. I'm proud of you. But because Sheena is clearly unhappy in her life, she likes to project her own addiction onto other people. And for some reason, they think it's funny to say that I am an alcoholic because I drink a glass of wine. And then they also think I'm abusing prescription pain or prescri <laughs> prescription medication. And I, you know, do we have to have a conversation about mental health and the medications that are prescribed for mental health? And that just because you have a brain of an addict or someone with a substance use disorder, doesn't mean that every single person that is prescribed medication for their mental health abuses their medication. So, No, I'm not being sued, Hazel. Like, oh my God, get out of here. No hate whatsoever. Like, yes, I've been sued before. Get the hell out of my life. I have never lost a lot lawsuit. So she's like, in their eyes, because Sheena's a recovering addict and because uh, 
Bree never got help for her gambling problem or her mental illness that she said that she was suffering from that caused her to gamble. I'm now um, addicted to Adderall and an alcoholic. So apparently my troll had a bottle of pills and a bottle of wine. And then Sheena went on a, like a quite a big diatribe and her heart was beating out of her chest, she said. She said her heart was beating out of her chest to tell me that I needed to get help for my addiction. Her heart was beating out of her chest because I need to get help with an addiction I don't have. <laughs> I need to get help for an addiction I don't have. So I don't know how to get help for an addiction I don't have, Sheena. Um, single day. So it's, um, you know, I understand what it's like. And I'm also physically addicted to it. I know that if I try to get off Adderall, I'm going to have to go through withdrawal. I'm also physically addicted to my citalopram and to my boost bar. I know that. You actually can drink on them. Um, you really can. You can have a glass of wine. You absolutely can, Brittany. And you can fuck right off. And I don't, I'm not an alcoholic. So it's none of your fucking business if I have a glass of wine. My doctor was like, you can't do this. You can't do that. I don't want you to drink wine. I don't want you to drink alcohol. I don't want you to drink anything else. I love that people. So what ADHD meds only last like anywhere from 10 to 12 hours. So once, once your medication wears off, you don't have any Adderall in your system anymore. It only has, it only works for like however many hours it works. I'm on an extended release form. Once it's out of your system, you're not on it anymore. It's out of your system. And I got a DUI when I was 24 years old. I haven't had a, I have not even had a speeding ticket since then. It's like the only, I've never had a speeding ticket. It's the only moving violation ticket I've ever had. I guess go big or go home. And that one, Thank goodness I did not hurt anyone. Thank goodness no one was injured. I literally got pulled over within like a block of starting my car. So there's that. It was in California. I'm not worried about my past. It actually doesn't bother me. Like people think that it offends me, but I'm honest about it. So it's like, it doesn't offend me. I don't lie about it. I don't hide it. I've actually talked about it on my channel multiple times. I'll answer questions about it. It's not really that big of a deal. I mean, it is a big deal that it happened, but in terms of like, it's not that big of a deal to me in the context of like, I'm not ashamed of it. I'm not, I don't run of it. I don't run away from it. I'm not embarrassed by it. It was a really good wake up call and a good list, li good listen, good lesson for me. Yeah. I would never say it's okay ever. Oh, he was calling me a drunk. He was like posting a live Instagram live where I had a glass of wine. So therefore I'm a drunk on Instagram, whatever. So here is what happened. Mimi was out and about on Saturday night and she, I guess, had a few drinks and then decided to get into her car. And apparently she was driving and this didn't end up very well. And she like basically fails all of the field sobriety tests. She wasn't she just wasn't there, you guys. She was tipsy. Cheers. I don't know what this is. Red's Wicked Black Cherry. Let's try it. Oh my God, you guys. Let me try it again. should be good after the fifth step. <laughs> is anyone else the kind of person? Um, it is cold. It's like ice cold. It's literally, it's cold. Yeah, I don't think I can waste it. I think I have to drink it. I think I have to drink it.
Excuse me. I'm 10 toes down on this, Sheena, that no addict in recovery that I know goes off on platforms and accuses other people. Because I'm pretty sure one of the benchmarks of recovery is to own your own problems and not project them onto other people. And you're actually doing addict behavior by projecting your problems onto me. That's how you can still be a dry drunk or a dry pill popper. You can still be active in your addiction if you're literally using your coping mechanisms to accuse other people. Sheena, uh, listen, no, 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 no. I'm home. I couldn't talk earlier, but I'm not going to have anyone talk to me when I can't respond back. So, you don't, uh, you dare accuse me. You've got about me. five minutes and I'll listen to what you have to say. Sheena, I listened to you accuse me of a using alcohol when I was pregnant, never happened. And I literally heard you say with, I'm gonna say this with my whole chest, Katie needs to put the bottle down and stop abusing prescription drugs. None of which I do. You accuse me of being an alcoholic and abusing my son's prescription medications, sniffing Addy and being a drug addict. None of which I am. And you were confident, you were so fucking confident. And I won 30 seconds. And you are a hundred percent wrong. You did a video and accused me, or you were on some panel accusing me of drinking my entire pregnancy. I didn't drink a drop. Where the fuck does this come out from, huh? Tell me when you're done and I'll respond. There's no response other than saying you're sorry. Wrong. No, first of all, sorry, I never awful. accused you of drinking while you were pregnant. I don't know how many kids you have. I know you have one that's three or four I've heard, don't know anything about him. Um, I Wrong. found a bottle on the table and I said, while people are accusing Bria of things, they need to push the bottle away from their face. No, that's not that. what you said. That is not what you said. You said that you had been sober for 16 years and you yep. knew an addict when you saw one and you yep. accused me of being an alcoholic and a drug addict and, and Brie, I was I, watching, don't I gaslight need, me. I need receipts. I need receipts on that. Oh, you always have selective amnesia. I, I there don't too. ever, ever recall, uh, accusing you of being a drug addict. You said I abuse Faith. What did she say? I said that you abuse Adderall and Okay, I want alcohol. receipts. Want receipts. You said it, and then Bree said that I sniffed them. Want receipts. want receipts. You have them. Well, I did see a video of you, uh, like, hunting them down. I mean, you were hunting them hard. Um, I don't know what you do with them, but, you Gina. know. But Gina. here's the thing, Katie. You have to understand, I'm not going to change. I'm not going to change. How about you just say you're sorry and happen. you were wrong? I'm not going to say that because I don't feel that and it wouldn't you be don't, So you, you're in my house and you know that I'm abusing drugs? I don't ever remember accusing you of abusing drugs. You just said this I hunted down ever. Adderall. Um, there's ever. no video of me hunting that, down Adderall. But I also said, I don't know what you do with them or whatever. I just said that. Okay, Sheena, I never listen, I'll tell you, you what that. I do with them. Sheena, I have ADHD. I'm prescribed medication for my ADHD and I take them as prescribed. I take one okay. per day of okay. a controlled medication that is prescribed to me by a doctor. Okay. Okay. I don't hunt so, shit down. I get them from a pharmacy. Okay. All right. I so don't sniff do you, shit. What do you want now? I, I mean, want I you to say you. you're sorry and that you were wrong. Not going to happen. That's you were wrong. Happen. You were wrong. You're looking for something here you're not going to find. You're just not going to find it. You were wrong. Pull it out. Bitch. Pull it out. You're, I said, show me the receipts. Pull it out. It's in your ass. She's a fucking bitch. The receipts are in her ass. I said it. I'm sorry, that woman is a bitch. Like, how do you like, I'm telling you, how right. are you gonna get on someone's panel and say, I'm not gonna apologize and I'm not wrong when they're absolutely 100% wrong? And here's the thing, I don't care who Sheena is. I don't care. I don't know anything about her. I only heard her say with her own mouth that she was 16 years in sobriety and that she knew that I was an addict. I heard her say that with her own mouth. And then, you know what they'll say is, she didn't say that. That's not what happened. I have selective amnesia. I inserted myself into the story because I saw Brie getting like attacked by this Katie Joy lady. And I was like, why would this Katie Joy be talking about this Brie lady? That's what she said. She was up the other night saying you drank through your whole pregnancy. Who said that? Did, did Sheena say that about me? My goodness. Okay. So I definitely did not drink during my pregnancy. I didn't drink. I didn't smoke. I didn't eat. I hardly ate lunch meat. I had, I gave up. Like I was a huge at that time in my life, a huge sushi uh, sushi eater. Gave up sushi. Like everything that you weren't supposed to eat. Like I literally gave up. I didn't. I wasn't a smoker, so I didn't smoke. I wasn't. I didn't drink. Okay. 
I barely drink coffee. I didn't eat tuna fish. So yeah, I don't know. And if I drank throughout my whole pregnancy, I would have a child that has fetal alcohol syndrome and he doesn't. But okay, nice Adderall, I mean, if you don't need it and you're abusing it and taking it at high levels, it can increase irritability. I am stating this as facts, Miss Karma, you piece of shit. Can make you more angry. Get the fuck out of my feed. Nobody gives a shit. Fuck off, Lizzie. I'm on Adderall every day, but I'm only on a therapeutic level. I take 25 milligrams. But it does the opposite effect for me. Oh my God, yeah. Oh my God, I'm, I'm mellow. Fuck you. Come on, say it, show your face, do it now. Show your face. One of the side effects of Adderall that they monitor is that it can increase your rage. Fuck you. You're such a fucking annoying piece of shit. It was none of your fucking business. You care about a fucking lawsuit that's none of your fucking business. I'm not going to be told to stop talking about it. I'm not going to be told to not address it. Like, shut the fuck up. No, I'm not on my second glass of wine. If you have a problem with people having a glass of wine, get the fuck out of my chat. No, I'm annoyed because you guys are just annoying. Why do I have to fucking tell you what's going on in my life? Because you heard someone say something about me. She pops off all the time. I actually am a reporter, so you can fuck off. Take your Karen ass and get out of here. <laughs> Bye, Chelsea. You're psycho too. She's up and down. I do care what people think of me. I don't care what you think about me. Because I want people to like me. I don't care if people don't like me. When she's irritable. Well then, Linz, don't be here. I'll say goodbye to you right now. They will defend everything that bitch does. So you guys love, I know you guys really love the call-in shows, but those are super taxing for me. I have, I have a really hard time sometimes dealing with like people talking. You have no idea what I look like when I'm not on my meds and how crazy I can get kids. So you just be thankful that I'm on the meds I am today. Because old Katie, if she would have saw those comments, would have been in a fight with your face. You're clearly not taking care of yourself because you are still dealing with the very violent outbursts. You're dealing with the anger and the rage. That's not taking care of yourself. If I'm not kissing your ass, then I'm somehow like um, mean. Is that what it is? Nah, I love you guys. Can we not have a banter back and forth? We're having fun right now, you guys. We're having fun. I haven't been drunk in years. You know, it takes more than one glass of wine to get intoxicated. If I were going to get drunk, it would take me a lot. It would take me way more than a glass of wine. Probably like a whole bottle of wine. That would get me drunk but not one glass plus i don't drink the i don't drink wine very fast my doctor was like you can't do this you can't do that i don't want you to drink wine i don't want you to drink alcohol i don't want you to drink anything else i don't remember the last time i've drunk because i don't get drunk it's been so many years my husband is my husband doesn't drink and then we have a child that has um a lot of health conditions and we have had to go to the hospital in the middle of the night numerous times so we don't drink it's not conducive with his lifestyle and i'm almost 42 years old i have zero interest in being drunk and then oh mike's hard lemonade you know what you should do you should start like saying like hey this live production was sponsored by mike's hard lemonade and then just keep doing it and tagging them until they send you free mike's hard lemonade Oh. That's what you should do. You should That's get cool. sponsored with Mike's Hard Lemonade. What are you doing? Come on. I feel like if I did that, then people would be like, you're an alcoholic. And I'd be like, well, I'm 40. Uh, Bite me. I was wasted on my last live. No. Mm -mm. Oh, I'm thirsty. Does everyone have their drinks and wine? <laughs> it's now story time with Katie Joy. I have a lot of embarrassing stories. My most embarrassing story was when I was 21 years old and I was in a car. It was like January and I went to an atmosphere concert and the rapper slug was outside after the show and I started talking to him and I was really drunk and somehow 
I finagled a ride home with him, driven home by his girlfriend, and I was so wasted, I was 21, you guys, that I ended up getting kicked out of his car like four blocks from my friend's apartment because I was that annoying. Yes, middle of the winter, heels slipping everywhere, so drunk because Slug kicked me out of his car. All right. This like, I have a box of all of my old things. I don't even know what's in here. Now I need to go through this stuff. Yes. Okay. I need a box to put all this stuff. This is overwhelming. Okay. So, oh my God. Pictures. Oh God. Oh, you know what? I think this was Nathan. Nathan was my boyfriend for two days. Oh my God. Baby Katie at a formal. <gasps> this guy was the worst kisser. Oh my God. His name was Chris. I dated him for like three weeks and he like literally was the kind of kisser that would like swallow my whole face up when he kissed. Oh, this is more. <gasps> you guys. Oh my God. I went to this camp. Um, it was like a YMCA camp and I was obsessed with these boy counselors. Like I had a humongous crush on them. <laughs> Whoever this guy was, I think they, I think his nickname was Head. I think I, I was so obsessed with him. This is hilarious, you guys. I used to work with these people and I had a crush on this guy and then she and I were friends and then she hooked up with him and then we weren't friends anymore. I can probably throw those away. Oh my God. <laughs> I was obsessed with this guy named John. Oh my God. I was obsessed with this guy named John, and I told this girl, Sarah, that I went onto the University of Minnesota website to find his email. I sent him an email. However, I made it sound so casual, like, hey, how's it going? Spain is great. I hope you're, hope this is your address. <laughs> oh my God. I was obsessed with John Schmidt. Oh my God. We made out so much. He was like my favorite, like, party maker outer. Oh, yuck. Okay, this was my cousin's wedding, by the way. No, this is my brother's wedding. But this was my ex-boyfriend that I was with for a million years, and he is such a POS. Like, I have to throw this away. Oh, there he is again. Ish. Look at how cute he was, though. Oh, God, though. Oh, my God. This kid, I was obsessed with this kid. Okay. This was my friend, Andrew. He was the guy that had the locker right next door to me in high school, all high school. And every day I would go and I would get, go to my locker and he would slam it in my face every single day for like four years. That was my life with Andrew. Oh my God, Steve, that's going in the trash. Oh my God, senior prom. The one that was the Jehovah's Witness. That was Dean. Oh my God. Oh my God, this is gross. This was my first boyfriend. I'm not kidding, gross. Seriously, what did I see in this guy? Ugh. <laughs> All right, boxes empty. So it starts when I was 27 years old. It was somebody's birthday and we went to go sing, I think at the Legion or the VA, I can't remember. And um, we were out and it was near the end of the night. I think it was around maybe 1.30 and I was out, I left, I went outside to smoke cause I still would have a cig when I was drinking back then. And we hadn't been drinking a ton. Like I wouldn't have classified myself as ripped or wasted by any means. I had only been drinking, like we were, we were drinking pitchers of beer. I love beer. Beer and nobody was like taking shots or at least I wasn't taking shots there. They loved to take shots, but I was not much of a shots taker at that point in my life. Anyways, um, this person walks right up to me and they're like, Katie. And I was like, and it was Nick. Um, we start talking and we're just like catching up. And I was like, well, we're going back to my friend's house. Do you want to come with? Like, I don't know, you know, like you catch up with someone. So he comes with us and we're back at my friend Seisha's house and it's getting late and they're getting really, really, really ripped over at Seisha's house. And I remember somebody made me a drink, but I wasn't really wanting anything because I had been drinking beer that night. I love beer. 
and they were making me like a vodka cranberry and I just like wasn't into that at all. And I was tired. Um, I could not keep up with these people. I could not, it just, they, these were the kinds of friends that would literally go until seven or eight in the morning and I was never like that. I was always like tapping out by like two. If you were out at the club and you were with a guy and that guy was harassing the fuck out of your girl, right? She is so annoyed, but she will not tell that guy to go away. I was the friend that told that guy to get the fuck away from my friends. And I would say, my girl's not interested in you. You either buy her a drink and go away, or like buy her a drink and go away, or just go away. But she's not interested in you. She doesn't want to fuck you. You're not going home with her, leave. <laughs> like that was me. I was that girl. And I rarely got so drunk that I like was passing out. I was always the girl that was like never that drunk. I was like the girl that was like not like my girlfriends were the ones that blacked out and I was the one that was like getting them home, getting them the cabs, like, yeah, <laughs> like that was me. I had one best, my best friend always blacked out. I loved her, but she could not hold drinks at all. I was not the designated driver because I was drinking. So we were always like, you know, taking cabs. And I was never like that. I was always like tapping out by like two. And so um, Nick was like, well, I can give you a ride home. And I was like, oh, cool. That's awesome. Thank you so much for giving me a ride home. So we get to my house and it was never like, our conversation was never flirty. It was more just like, oh, I haven't seen you in a super long time. Like, do you want to talk? Blah, 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 blah. Um, and we get to my house and I was like, you know, I just bought this house. Do you want to see it before you go? I can show you my house. Um, and he's like, sure, yeah, I can come in. And he stays outside for a while and then he comes in and he brings his own beer in, which I thought was really weird um, because I had some at my house. I love beer. And he brought in his own and then I went, um, he sat down and then, you know, I, and then I was like, well, I have to go to the bathroom. And so I went to the bathroom and I left my beer out on the table and I came back out and he was like, oh, I have to go back to the car really quick. And I was like, okay. So I just take my beer and I start drinking and then he's out in his car for like a really long time. And he comes back and I am really messed up at this point. I don't, things are starting to get really hazy, um, super hazy to the point of like, it went from not being flirty to somehow um, we're sitting next to each other. And then I think I remember him putting his arm around me and then suddenly I don't remember anything else. It's some point later in the night and I'm, lying on my back. I'm very aware that I'm lying on my back and he's on top of me and I know what he's doing and I don't remember consenting to this happening. I don't even know how we got up there. Um, I can hear my dog like barking and rustling at the at the sheets and I'm I'm like trying to push him off me and I, I say no and he, I, all I remember him saying was oh just just a few more minutes I'm almost done and I was like no no get off and then I fell back into whatever it was I was in. I, I don't remember. And then I never came again. I never or never came to again. And then the next thing I remembered was I was very groggy and I had my cell phone right next to me and I knew something was really, really wrong um, because I had my shirt was pulled down. So it was really weird. All of the sheets were on my floor. Um, my tank top I had on was pulled down and my skirt was wrapped, like jacked up. And um, this was weird to me because if I would have been in a situation where it would have been consensual, this is not how I would have looked. I would not have had a tank top that was ripped down with my skirt like that. That, That's not, no, I never. And he was not there when I woke up. Um, he was gone. Um, there wasn't like a note or anything. Um, there wasn't anything. I don't know that I would have expected a note. I just, you know, it was just very bizarre. It, he was there and then he was gone. And I didn't, care if there was a note you know like the last thing I could think about was I want to talk to this guy I didn't want to talk to him I wanted to call the cops but I was so out of it I didn't I couldn't I immediately felt like no one would believe me that I was going to be blamed and I didn't know what to do because well she was out she was drinking she invited him into her house um, but I've never ever blacked out um, like that in my entire life never since one of my funny story of my 21st birthday in Spain, I got so drunk that I passed out on a street, like in Spain, the streets are cobblestone and it was this tiny town and the, the, they were narrow. And I passed out on the street, like with my head down and my feet up the hill. <laughs>
Um, I was diagnosed with post-traumatic stress syndrome uh, disorder. disorder. Um, after it happened, I had flashbacks. I had periods of complete like in um, where I was extremely numb and like not really present in what was going on. I would like lose periods of time. Um, certain smells and scents would trigger me and like elicit extremely emotional and like um, violent responses. While they're in the middle of the non unconsensual or SA, they're all standing outside the room. She actually fell asleep, um, like unconscious at one point. And they, and I don't mean to smile while I'm watching it is, and a lot of my PTSD also was associated with the fact that instead of being believed by the police, I was like rushed into an interrogation room and, and accused of lying and accused of making this up because I was a jealous, bitter woman. And that's literally, I was, I was told I was a slut. I was told that I was loose, that I was drunk, that I wanted it. This is how not to be a slut 101. And because I was so good at being a slut, I'm just going to say it out loud. I dated a lot and I got a lot of momentary pleasures, if you know what I'm saying. It was fun and I have zero regrets. Do you ever realize how much they build up physical intimacy to being like a part of marriage that it's as though like every time you're physical with someone, you're going to remember who that person was? Like I'm 40. Do you really think the guy that I was banging when I was 20 ever enters my mind ever when I'm with my husband? No. These people put such unrealistic attachments onto sex. It's kind of ridiculous. Once you guys figure out that you can't handle it anymore and you want to do it really badly, like you got to do it. Um, then at that point you decide to get married because in the real world, when you get to this point, you do it. And then sometimes when you do it, you realize that you weren't really that compatible and you're like, that was a good lay, but you know, we gotta go now. That was pretty bad. There was another embarrassing story when I was drunk, when I was 21 years old, 22, at a wedding, no less, of my cousins, completely drunk, thrown into a cab, and I had nothing on underneath my dress, and everyone saw it. Yay! Yeah, that really happened. Did I go to prom? If so, what was it like? <laughs> I went to prom both years, you guys. Both years I went to prom. Um... My first prom was with my friend, Billy. Um, there was no hanky-panky. And then um, my second prom was my senior prom. And I went with my boyfriend, Dean, who was the Jehovah's Witness. And um, that was at this place called Edinburgh. And we actually didn't even go to prom, really. <laughs> Sorry, mom and dad. Um, we went out to dinner and then after dinner we spent like the next like two hours trying to have Aaron's brother Sean get us booze and Aaron's brother Sean like spent forever trying to get us alcohol and then after we got the alcohol <laughs> we went to prom we had our pictures taken at prom I think we danced one dance and then we left <laughs> like and then um, we drove to um, a cabin a couple hours away and then we stayed overnight and we partied and, um, you totally made out at prom. Well, Dean and I had been making out for a while before prom, if you know what I mean. So prom wasn't like the, the night, you know what I mean? Dean and I had been dating for like over a year. So let's just say prom wasn't all that eventfully different than any other night with Dean. <laughs> My goodness. Do I go to class reunions? Funny story, you guys. Funny story. So, I was, my class reunion, I haven't been to any of the class reunions. Not one. Not a single class reunion. So, I didn't go to my 10 year reunion because I just didn't want to go. But when my 20 year one came up, I kept waiting for the invite. And I was like, why haven't I gotten the invite? Right? Where's the invite? Where's the invite? Where's the invite? I come to find out that the person who was organizing it knew that I had her blocked on Facebook because I don't like her. <laughs> We're not friends. And we had a falling out years ago and she knew that I had her blocked. So literally she went out of her way not to invite me to the 20 year reunion. And she knew I was blocked. She knew she was blocked and she didn't have anyone else give me the invite. So I missed the 20 year reunion and I was so mad because I actually wanted to go to that one. 
so like I have never gone to one of my high school reunions because I was bullied so viciously. I've literally, I've been 22 years out and I've not been to one because I still 22 years later, I don't want to see these people. And I was so mad because I actually wanted to go to that one. And I was just like, how, you guys are so stupid. I like went off on the president of our class. I was like, you're an idiot. Why would you send the Evites on Facebook? Like half our class isn't even on Facebook. It was the dumbest thing ever. So no, I did not go. Um, I was the girl in high school that had um, a very small group of friends. There was five of us. I think maybe six on a good day that hung out mostly four um, but beyond that I didn't have like a ton of friends and we were not in the popular group per se but we were not in like the group that wasn't like um, we weren't like the mean girls or we weren't like the the outcasts like we were invited to everything um, we hung out with the girls that were popular we were invited to their parties that kind of stuff but we weren't like the popular girls none of us dated boys from school because we went to a really small high school in freshman year I dated a boy that was a couple years older than me but after that every boyfriend that I had or anyone that I dated was from another school we were kind of like the alternative girls but sort of popular I don't know you'd have to ask them um, some of the girls from high school that were like in different groups just said that I was pretty inclusive and just was nice to everyone. Like we grew up in a little inner ring city called St. Louis or St. Anthony, which is right next to Minneapolis. Um, so like it's this tiny little community. It's crazy. It's like the smallest suburb in all of the Twin Cities metro area. I also, it's literally a, like that big. Um, everyone knew everyone. Um, and I was horrendously bullied because of my ADHD and my like hyperactivity and my inability to bite my tongue. That was like my number one issue with my ADHD was my like verbal impulsivity. And I would get into like arguments and stuff with everyone in school. And I would like fight with the guys that were in high school with me. Um, I didn't really fit in. I never dated the boy. I never dated the boys in high school. So long story short, I left, um, St. Anthony, and I never looked back. I will never go to a high school reunion. I have zero friends that I talked to from high school. I literally hate St. Anthony. There you go. I lied about everything. <laughs> Hold on. I got some wine. We'll, fit. we'll keep going. It goes on. Okay, another question. Since everyone thinks we're on drugs, should we do a bump of my lateral? I am just literally <laughs> hanging out with cocaine and meth, right, as we speak. I've been noticing that since people are so obsessed with my drug use that I, I do so much, I'm just going to start embracing that I'm a drug addict. Periscope. Hi guys. Oh my gosh. I've never done a periscope before. She's busted. Someone screenshotted one of your periscopes at retrying to insinuate that you use. I can send you the link. Why do you guys keep sending me this kind of stuff? Why does you guys thinking I use? Use what? Please tell me what drugs I'm using that you think I'm using. That's ridiculous. Well, who cares? Who cares? Just ignore it. Honestly, who cares? Plus I know I don't use drugs. Um, if there's any lines on my, um, if there'd be any lines on here, it would be powder. There's no drug use in this house. That would be crazy. Yeah. So we have to be drug tested. So we're drug tested by our doctors. I would not never risk my own mental health and use something that could have my doctor pull from taking any things. Honestly, I do have a lot of powder on this table. Quite frankly, it's like all over. That's what they're seeing. NARS. NARS. <laughs> this is my NARS. My NARS. Not really that exciting, you guys. I don't think you can snort it. And you know what happens? Watch. It falls on there. Look. That it's all over the... That it's all over. Look. Oh, those are all my lines. Oh my gosh, you guys. Whoa. That's just weird. Like, seriously. Hot girls online. Hot girls online. This is weird. Right. Ooh, got you. I will tell you this though. That comment about my drugs. Ooh. I don't really know where the drug stuff came up. Um, it started with like the summer. Um, people just said I was super skinny. So I must be on meth, I guess. I don't know, or Coke or something. And then um, I have really bad allergies, super bad allergies. And so I'm always, my nose is always running. It's terrible. My nose always runs when I'm down here. And then I always look like a Coke head when I'm on the show. Hey, there she is. 
<laughs> Here we go. I wipe my nose. no problem saying that I snort Adderall. Multiple channels have said that about me, by the way. I don't snort Adderall. Never have, never will. If you're one of those people that are shaming me, saying that I'm snorting my Adderall or that I'm taking too much, shame on you. You guys all look stupid for saying that. Uh, she was using, she was using Adderall. See? Can I give them some advice though? Um, if you want to get high, guys, Grow up and do cocaine or meth like the rest of us. Okay, get right. off of your closet. Just do the. Go snort stuff, some please. Adderall. Stop whatever. Yeah. It'll be a blast. I uh, promise you. And um, I, I will warn you guys. I'm a hugger, so everybody that's there will, will probably get several hugs from me. Um, and if you don't like that, um, put that on your name tag so that I'll know. I'm like, okay, I am a hugger. I'm a hugger, but I'm also respectful of people's boundaries. And I'm if I'm like, if I'm super excited, I can be very high strung, especially if I'm not on my Adderall. So it's just going to depend on whether or not like I'm Adderalled or not Adderalled. Like um, but... Okay, that's good to know. That's good to know. <laughs> can, I can. The audience and get, can I just sit in the audience and get drunk? <laughs> I figured that was good. That, that was that was going to be the, the way. She's not motivated. I've been having such a hard time getting ready today, and I had to put this shirt on honestly to make me feel motivated because when I put my mind on my money, then I'm like, all right, let's get to work. Let's get on YouTube. And Snoop Dogg always makes me feel inspired. So I got my mind on my money and my money on my pina colada. Who wants to give me some motivation? And when I got my diagnosis of ADHD, my psychologist said that my OCD and my anxiety were not necessarily anxiety and OCD, but they were ADHD that hasn't been treated um, mm -hmm. because those are subproducts of it. And then once I went on to the medication, like my anxiety has gone away, but my doctor won't take me off of my anti-anxiety meds because Adderall can make you anxious. So she doesn't want, right. she doesn't want me to just be on the Adderall in the event that I could be anxious on it. So, mm -hmm. you know, you have to take a mix of co a cocktails per se of drugs in order to, to balance like, you out. Yep. In fact, I can't get intoxicated at all because my son needs 24 hour a day, seven day a week care with his medications, with his needs. Why is she always drinking in every single scene? And even if it's just a beer, like, if you're at home with your kids and you're filming, why do you need to have a beer? It's just weird to me. You know, these people are ridiculous is what they are. So, hold on. Sorry, I'm going to have a beer. So, anyways. And then every video, every episode I see her in, she's got a beer. I love beer. But I'm just like... I'm just pointing out the hypocrisy and I'm not playing like, oh, Macy's a drunk, fall down drunk. I have no idea. I'm just pointing things out. <laughs> like I was just trying to be like Macy's Bud Light. She's an addict that seeks out diagnoses of mental illness to get pills. And then yeah, that to cover up her to cover up her addiction. Did I at one point in my life smoke pot? Yeah, I did. Have I tried a lot of drugs in my life? Mm-hmm, I have. But just because I'm thin and maybe pick my hands or play with my ha hair, that doesn't mean I'm a drug addict. And I really actually find that comment offensive. Next question. I assume you have a little problem with alcohol. Since I just covered the same question, 
<laughs> with drugs, I will address it with alcohol. I can't even tell you how far from the truth this is. <laughs> and sometimes on my night streams, I have a beer or I'll have a glass of wine. But literally, if, if you know me, if you know me, you know that I like never have more than one ever. I used to, but not not for years. But no, we don't drink. My husband doesn't drink at all. My husband's sober. And um, I don't really drink very much. I think the last time I had a glass of wine was on Saturday. I had one glass of wine. I might have a glass of wine tonight. Here. And addiction is a family disease. And I know this because my husband, his parents were both addicts. All, all um, two of my, three of my husband's siblings are still addicts. Like they use periodically or they, they relapse. Um, so it's a lot of it is like, it's a learned, like they, this is how your parents cope. This is where they go to. This is what you see as a child. And it's why it becomes a pattern in beha of behavior for coping. And it becomes a way like kids see how their parents like, oh, I'm not feeling good. I'm going to reach for the bottle and then, or I'm going to reach for this pill. And the, you know, so much of this starts with what children see, which is why it's so important that children don't see this kind of stuff and that parents are healthy. My doctor was like, you can't do this. You can't do that. I don't want you to drink wine. I don't want you to drink alcohol. I don't want you to drink anything else. And if she's on illicit drugs or, or taking prescriptions that are not prescribed or abusing prescriptions, what kind of environment is this for this child? This is, I, this is so messy. But it's hard. Addiction is a family disease. It's like a one day at a time for a lot of people. He was thankfully at a position where he was not fully dependent. So um, because of the history in his family, the pattern of his drinking was getting more and more and more. And so he just made a choice to quit. Since he's quit, he quit once and then he had like a hiccup. But since this last time he quit, it's been like five years or four years. Yes, relapse is normal. I think every person is different. Some people, it's a lot, but, and we also don't keep alcohol here. So it's like, I'll have like one bottle of wine. And I don't drink very much, like at all. I have like a glass of wine here and there. I'm sure, yeah, I, I mean, I think it just depends on where you're at and with what you're doing, but we talked about that too. I mean, I think the biggest thing you have to do is just be communicating. And like, if it were a problem for him, I would not have anything in this house at all. And we didn't for a very long time um, when he was first quitting. Like I quit with him for a very long time just to like support him. Both of his parents are um we're addicts too. So his mom passed away, but she was sober for over a decade before she passed away. And his dad has been sober for a long time. But yeah, we were very proud of her. We used to go out for my, our, my, my mother-in-law's sobriety was a much bigger deal to us than my father-in-law's just because my mother-in-law's alcoholism was a huge part of my of just the messiness of my ch my son's or my husband's childhood. Unfortunately, she passed away from cancer from smoking. And sadly, she drank for such a long time that it affected her um, cognitive ability. And sadly, her cancer was in her brain before she passed away. So she passed away. Oh my gosh, five years ago, six years ago. And skull. I don't drink alcohol. I don't drink um, hard liquor. Very, can't even remember the last time I had hard liquor, to be honest. Come here, buddy. Long Island iced teas will like put me on the floor. Mental illness is a huge problem in our world, and I think it's...